Hello, everybody. This is Glenda and Buster and Rosie with AKA GK Fralin, a friendly community. And our friendly community welcomes you. Not bad to you too, whatever. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I hope everybody's had a wonderful day. And I hope you plan on having more wonderful times today, tomorrow, and whenever. Tonight I'm going to talk about a not so pleasant thing that occurs in everyone's life and it's happened to someone very dear. And that is the loss of a loved one. This is not an easy topic for anyone to deal with. Um, my sister's husband just lost his father to kind of a sudden death situation. And the thing about losing anyone, especially someone who is very close to you, is that people not judge you or how you grieve. Everybody faces loss in a different way. Now, I think a, a particular belief system may help, but that's not always the case. I mean, I have a belief system and I know that they had a similar belief system and so, to me, I find that comforting, at least to the point of, I have not lost a parent yet, and I, you know, I know it will happen. I just don't know how, personally, I will react at that moment. And this is where you have to be careful to not judge a person. On their reaction because some people internalize they may go home and grieve some people internalize for months before they actually let go of the weight of that and there are they they call them the five stages of grief that doesn't mean that a person just walks through those five stages in a row and they're over it that isn't it's just a pattern or a <laughs> it's kind of like you know the alphabet you can start it at um you know if you're writing somebody's name you can start at p and end at a and if you're starting it you know it's just it's 
not everything is en route. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can put this, but sometimes you run across people who are just so strong, or they seem to be. Sometimes that can be deceptive, but sometimes you run across people who seem to be so incredibly strong because they are able to deal with more than one tragedy or sudden death in their life, well, or several, and it just seems like you feel like you would never, ever be able to handle it the way they do. And maybe you wouldn't because we're all different, but don't underestimate the fact that they do feel it and they do need to know you're there. Even if they're not the kind who are going to run up and, you know, want somebody to <clears throat> hug them, which is probably the way I will be, but want someone to hug them and soothe them. Maybe they're just not that type. That doesn't mean they don't want you there. Doesn't mean that they don't feel comforted by your presence or just knowing that you are available. And that's in any kind of these situations. I mean, I've suffered losses. They've never been like a sibling or a parent or a child. My grandparents, when I lost them, I felt a deep loss in <clears throat> just knowing that I, even if I hadn't been in touch with them a lot, because I'd, you know, grown, moved away, had my own family, I still knew they were there. We still went to family Christmases. I'd still, you know, had conversations and to know that that wasn't going to be there for me anymore. That, that part hurt. But in, you know, for me personally, and my per personal belief, I knew they were in another place and they were doing fine. And, or their soul. Now, not everybody has that, that belief. And I'm not saying, <clears throat> and I'm not going to judge whether, you know, whether they should feel one way or another either, because I just simply haven't walked in their shoes. Some people find comfort in thinking that there is nothing beyond this world. And so, you know, and let's say, decide to feel differently about it, somehow, for some reason, some feel comforted. Um, but, for one thing, they feel like they're giving back to the earth, or whatever. I'm, I'm kind of getting off track. What I'm trying to say is, you cannot judge how the other person should react, how they should feel, how they are feeling, because you don't know. Because you know, some will express express more. Others will hardly express at all, but they may feel it just as deeply. And the most important thing I can do for my sister and for her children and for her husband and for their family is just to let them know I'm here. To be available. Being available is so important. You can't always be there in the moment. You can't, I, I probably will not be able to make the memorial service. And, but just knowing that I'm available in whatever capacity, the capacity I can be available in that to some people is going to mean so much. I know to me, 
it just means the world. If I'm having a hard time about something, just to know somebody is available. Or the, you know, and even if they're not available in the moment, there's going to be a, cha a time when they will be available. And I know that their heart is with me. Now that's, to me, the best thing you can do for anyone. Is to just, you know, for, for your communication with them. To be communicative. Don't harp and say, you know, don't insist that they come to you. Don't insist that they feel a certain way. Don't insist that th this or that should be. Just be there. That's all I can say. Just be there. And love them. And that's about all I can say. Good night, good night, don't let the bugs bite. Good night, good night, sleep till the daylight. Good night, good night, be kind to each other. Good night, good night, tell someone you love them. Let them know you're there. Just acknowledge them. Good night, Don.